Hi everyone, Nothing-y Thing Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. It's time for a review of the new Girl in Red project, If I Could Make It Go Quiet. Girl in Red is the musical brainchild of Norway's Marie Ulven. Once a breezy, dreamy indie project off of a series of singles and a couple of EPs, Girl in Red has recently expanded to incorporate more manic forms of pop and rock music, which you can hear on semi-viral singles such as Serotonin as well as You Stupid Bitch, the former of which I actually think is one of the better pop singles of the year. Not only are the gentle and vulnerable hook vocals on Serotonin infectious instantaneously, but I also love how versatile the production is between the shimmering, soaring choruses and grimy lo-fi style beats, all of it serving as a foundation for a very intense and unnerving portrayal of chemical imbalance, violent intrusive thoughts, crying uncontrollable Again, great single, and as the opener of this debut full-length album, it also sets a bar for the rest of the record, which, unfortunately, it fails to reach ever again. I was really hoping this record would knock it out of the park, but it just doesn't land anywhere in that vicinity, as it begins to run out of ideas pretty quickly. With the following track, Did You Come, featuring a vocal melody and a melodic progression that is a lot like serotonin. Yes, the song that just played. But now in this literal side-by-side -side comparison, I'm hearing worse production, weaker vocal mix, a less interesting song overall. If you were gonna incorporate something else on the record that was this close melodically in tone to the intro and one of the bigger tracks on the album, why not a reprise later on the project? I guess the incredibly horny and sad lyrics are a change of pace, but overall the song feels redundant and sort of disappointing this early on in the record. I was hoping the song Body and Mind would bring a fresh idea to the table instead, but uh, it did not. I know this is not a comparison everyone's gonna vibe with, but what is this song other than the lordification of, like, an Imagine Dragons track? From the faux ominous verses to the overblown, densely layered, soaring choruses, it sounds like, again, an Imagine Dragons song, but meant for moody TikTok bedroom poppers. Send it back. Horny lovesick mess goes the quaint piano ballad route, juxtaposing the sound of some sweet keys and chords against uh, some very desperate, sad, horny, lovesick lyrics. I mean, I get the contrast, but it's not one that I find particularly interesting, or at least in the way that Ulvin portrays it. I get it. It's an ironic moment. You should be so happy at this point, and yet you're sad because uh, your success is not necessarily fulfilling, as fulfilling as this love that you're yearning for would be. But the way it's written and performed just comes off so desperate and on the nose. On the track Midnight Love, the vocals turn excruciating with Ulvin just howling with way too much reverb about settling romantically for less. When your silver is my gold. Which thematically, I suppose, is slightly concerning, but what's even more concerning is the track You Stupid Bitch, a song that I didn't really enjoy all that much as a single for numerous reasons, but mostly because the lyrics weren't really flying for me, but uh, because I hadn't heard the entire record yet, I assumed that at least in part what was being sung here was uh, meant to be kind of tongue-in-cheek or maybe even satirical in tone. But considering the consistent themes of just lust and lovesickness as well as unrequited love, I'm led now to believe that as Girl in Red is singing stuff like, uh, you stupid bitch, you don't know what's good for you, I'm the best thing you got, uh, you should be with me, uh, that um, there is uh, uh, way too much seriousness uh, to it. I mean, again, I guess I'm open to the idea that there is uh, some level of satire here where the song is more self-aware than it comes across as being, but in practice on this song, it just doesn't come across. When I listen to it, all I can do is just imagine how much more cringe it would be if some sniveling neckbeard were singing this track. Ugh, you stupid bitch! Rue is a passable indie folk 
number that eventually incorporates some driving dance beats. Not a mind-blowing moment on the record, but actually still one of the more respectable tracks here, well-balanced vocally and instrumentally. Then as we move into the final leg of the LP, we get tracks like Apartment 402, which features throbbing electronics, cinematic swells, but the vocal performance on this track leaves quite a bit to be desired. There is an emotional flatness, a coldness to it, in the same way as, I don't know, like Born to Die era Lana Del Rey. Not particularly compelling, especially since it, it seems so uh, derivative. With Period, the record is really making sure that it's ending off on a note where it's just losing all of its personality, all of its flavor. We have some painfully bland lyrics and guitar licks on this one. Sort of feels like a Smith song, but if you stripped out all of the charm, all the poetry, and replaced the uh, uh, jangly tone with a washed out and drab sound. The second to last I'll Call You Mine is a relative moment of brightness and hope on the record. All of these themes of unrequited love and being desperate for love melt away in favor of uh, what reads like uh, a narrative that says uh, this love is kind of here now. It's it's here to stay. It's back. This story being delivered over a heavy driving rock instrumental seems almost Interpol-esque. Interpol, but if it were geared more toward the dance club. Still, it doesn't change the fact that the track is uh, a bit half-baked on the ending, really kind of hits an abrupt finish, and then from there, because this track is in a way, the closer, we then hit this short instrumental to finish the record off that is uh, just a piano and string piece, which feels a little tacked on. It's almost like it's there just to make up for the fact that uh, the last song is, is not really um, as uh, final or grand a statement as it should have been. But uh, yeah, I was not really enjoying myself on this one um, in any way. Uh, outside of the first track being pretty good. I actually like the first track a lot. Serotonin is a jam. Uh, everything else here is not. I did not enjoy a single track on it outside of the first one. I suppose maybe there is some potential here for Girl in Red going forward, but if that is going to be the case, there really needs to be like uh, some overhauling of the lyricism, the songwriting, what aesthetically or stylistically exactly we're going for. Still though, this is just a debut album, I suppose, and there could always be growth from here. Uh, regardless though, I am still feeling a decent two strong three on this one. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, uh, music uh, forever.